Okay, um, good evening. Uh, so my name is Steve Job. Um, my uh, day job uh, mostly is looking after the Urban Observatory here in Sheffield. So I'm the technical manager for the Urban Floors Observatory. So, um, and in fact, this project um, has sort of been uh, 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 helped along, if you like, by uh, the work that we're doing in the observatory. Just to give you a real quick uh, overview, it's been a 2.4 million pound uh, capital project here in the city. Uh, where we've been involved with installing um, sensing equipment for air quality, uh, meteorological uh, sensors or weather stations. Uh, we've built uh, a couple of vehicles, one for air quality sensing, another sensing, and another vehicle which will be online shortly for um, imaging uh, uh, buildings in the city. And our last one is, is to do with radio networks, which is kind of where my interest uh, comes from. And, and from that, uh, we've decided that because we're trying to sense uh, uh, the, the city, it would be a great idea if we had a network that enabled us to do that and that's how I got involved with the Things Network in Sheffield. So, um, just the things I'm going to run through there on the screen. Um, <coughs> this is the sort of direction of where we are um, with, the, uh, with the Things Network So uh, and gives you an overview. So, the Things Network uses LoRaWAN or Low Power Radio Alliance uh, Wide Area Network specifications. It's a low power radio system, a packet system, and it operates around about 870 megahertz. Uh, it's in a public band. Um, it's a long range, low bandwidth system, so it's ideal for sensing. Um, and the gateways basically are there to provide uh, packet continuity. Uh, so you're transitioning from the, the sensor network and then basically into cloud services. Um, and the core system support is, is being uh, provided by uh, Urban Flows in Sheffield. But with the support of a lot of people now, they're involved um, with the Things Network and things like Smart Sheffield. Oops, sorry. The battery came out, I don't know. Anyway, um, just so you check where I am here. Yes. <laughs> you can use a keyboard just in front of you. Yeah, sorry about that. Right, okay. So what are the aims? We want to build a reliable um, uh, gateway infrastructure. Uh, we've sort of come to this over a period of time as we've been uh, thinking about um, uh, what we wanted to do uh, as a group. And so we talked a lot about um, you know, building little Raspberry Pi devices, building stuff on, on Arduinos, doing all sorts of things like that. And ultimately what it came down to is we needed a gateway infrastructure that would enable these things to happen. So um, before we could really come up with lots of uh, imaginative and interesting use cases, we needed this uh, uh, infrastructure to be able to actually connect to. So that's, that's what we've decided to do. Uh, we're going to map and maintain extensive coverage um, across Sheffield City, and hopefully, if we have the, the means, uh, across the city region. Um, and we want to help people uh, connect to this network. So we've got some students, I've got some students now working on creating <coughs> uh, uh, code modules uh, for the nodes that connect to them. So at the moment, um, we're operating uh, one gateway um, here on the university, which has been operational for about seven months now. It's based on top of the Hicks building, so it's a, a really good location. And we've been mapping coverage uh, of that um, using uh, GPS devices which connect to that uh, gateway and there are other gateways operated by other individuals around the city. And we've got gateways now planned for other locations and that's uh, what I'm going to share with you. So um, this is the map of uh, Sheffield that we're looking at. Um, you can see the, the, uh, the location there of the Hicks um, uh, gateway which is just outside the ring road there um, and then these are the locations of the other gateways that we're, we're looking to install so working with uh, Alex Kelly at uh, Tinsley Bridge kindly offered to host um, a gateway he's in possession of that now and we're working to get that installed so that should give us uh, coverage over um, towards the, uh, the east of the city i um, been working with Matt Proctor at Arup um, to get one in the uh, centre. We've now, uh, I think, found a device that we can uh, um, install there, as long as I can make the antennas a bit smaller. Um, so we're working on that. And then the other locations are, are basically at university locations that we've got agreement uh, with the university to install. Um, what we'd also like to do, and we've now opened the dialogue with uh, a 
Hallam University to uh, install gateways at their locations where we think we need coverage. And also, um, uh, there's an offer for us to install one at One Disco. Um, they're currently moving, so uh, we're just uh, looking to see where that, uh, that one will be connected. But that will give us a fair spread of gateways across the city. And remember, this is a long range. Uh, uh, system, so uh, we believe it will actually uh, give us uh, pretty good connectivity. But you know, we will be mapping this network. So this is what, if you look at it today, um, there's a website called TTM Mapper, uh, which relies on people going out with mapping nodes to uh, check connectivity, um, and this gives you a pretty good idea of what sort of um, uh, coverage there is. Um, the main Hix node is under that two. Uh, right there. So that's giving reasonable connectivity across the city centre. Um, the ones with uh, exceptionally long coverage uh, of the two here, those are at our cow Molly. Um, nothing to do with, with our network of, of gateways, but obviously um, uh, providing good coverage from there. If we sort of zoom in a, a little bit and look only at our Hicks gateway, you can see actually. Um, that we've got uh, pretty good coverage uh, from uh, that gateway. And remember, this only shows coverage of where we've actually been out and mapped or where others have been out and mapped. It doesn't show comprehensively where there, there is coverage overall. So there is an exercise in, in developing the, this map over time. In, in terms of the colour coding, uh, red is better. The more blue it is, the worse it is. And that's in terms of uh, link quality which is uh, essentially a summation of uh, signal strength uh, recorded at that location and the signal to noise ratio. Uh, and that then gives uh, what uh, is termed as link quality. But you can see that uh, going out to the east, we're actually getting uh, good connectivity uh, 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 right out um, yeah, in that direction. Obviously where the uh, uh, topography is a little bit more challenging, <coughs> we've got uh, less coverage. But if we were to compare that um, map against the one I showed you about where we're planning to put gateways, I believe that we're, we're going to have uh, good um, uh, infrastructure coverage across the city. Steve, do you, do you intend linking this to maps of the essentially topography and the city buildings to allow you to interpolate? Yes. So, yes, <laughs> absolutely. So, um, part of the pitching work. Uh, that um, I've been commissioned to do, uh, we'll actually be looking at that in, in great detail. So we'll, we'll have a vehicle which will be um, equipped with radio frequency surveying equipment, which uh, will go out and not only look at these frequencies, but all the frequencies that are operating basically to provide comms across the city, and over a period of the next sort of year, 18 months, to provide that type of information. Um, that's sort of going off onto the pitching product project, but that's a piece of work that's definitely uh, in hand now. Yeah, we're taking delivery of that kit in the next four weeks, so um, yeah, that, that will happen. With it. So, um, in comparison to that uh, previous uh, slide, this again shows coverage across the city. What, what I've done here is um, I've used GPS nodes, but not ones that actually report back to TTM Mapper. Uh, it requires a certain integration, and it honestly sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. Uh, on these particular nodes, it's decided not to work. But what I've been able to do is capture the GPS uh, information, uh, download that, and then uh, show that uh, on this view. So this is over a number of actually commercial vehicle-based and personal um, GPS trackers, um, uh, which uh, you can pretty much buy for a few tens of pounds. Um, and equip uh, uh, vehicles to do uh, fleet management, if you like. And this is the sort of uh, 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 capability it will provide. But in this case, as again, it's showing uh, what sort of uh, coverage we've got uh, across <coughs> uh, this network across the city. And you can see that even with the gateways that we've got installed at the moment, we're getting good coverage. Um, and I mentioned the, the city region, so this then is... Um, a map that shows more broadly uh, what we've got across across this, uh, the city region. If you go up to Barnsley, um, the DMC in Barnsley have got a gateway uh, there, and that's providing uh, pretty good coverage in the town centre. I operate a gateway just to the south of the, the city, 
um, so that provide, uh, sorry, the town that provides some uh, additional coverage. But you can see in areas such as uh, Rotherham and Doncaster, um, uh, there's very little coverage at the moment. And, uh, and also, um, uh, but Chesterfield is actually quite well covered. <coughs> So, in terms of what we're doing, the next steps, um, we're looking to complete a gateway installation uh, around about by the end of the year, so that, that core installation that I showed you uh, will hopefully be in place. We'll continue to map coverage, um, and, and we're working on an enhanced device at the moment, which um, uh, will actually record GPS uh, information uh, where we are mapping and where we don't get coverage. So it will tell us, if you like, where the, uh, the places are where we, we need to enhance coverage. And we hope to uncover and begin to develop the use cases. And I say one of the most obvious ones right here will be fleet management across the city using these commercially available devices right now. Um, if you want to get involved, um, you can join uh, us at the, uh, Sheffield, the TTN Sheffield community through the uh, Things Network uh, pages. Uh, we do have monthly meetings. Uh, there was one this evening uh, prior to the, uh, uh, this session. There'll be another before the Smart Sheffield meeting uh, next month. And B, please feel free to contact me directly. Um, that's my email address. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions for Steve? Uh, one of the things, Steve, is you're looking for more sites with, uh, yeah. I think we can get some of this kit on. What, what were the requirements uh, that, that are needed uh, in order to improve the coverage in town? Yeah, ideally, uh, the main thing we need is power. Um, the, all of the gateways that we're using are uh, POE, um, so it's a fairly simple install. Uh, we're just an Ethernet cable going to the outside of the building. Um, Ideally, we'd like to backhaul them using an Ethernet connection, just from a reliability point of view. Uh, if that's not possible, uh, there are gateways available now that we can put a 4G SIM in. Uh, that just adds to the operating cost, really. But we, if, if it's a good site, then, then we'll be highly motivated. Let's do that way. Yeah. So if anybody knows anybody's got a very big building somewhere, we, uh, yeah. we'd be very happy to put yeah. something on top. Yeah, and we'll, uh, you know, if it's a site that we really want to go on, we'll provide the, um, the equipment. Fantastic, yeah. thanks Steve. Thank you. Okay, thank you.